In this section, we'll be covering measurements. In this class, we will be measuring angles in degrees. In this course, we'll be working with angles that are greater than 0 degrees and less than or equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, if we were to use x to represent the measure of our angle, we can say that x must be greater than 0, but less than or equal to 180 degrees. Let's talk about the different kinds of angles that we'll come across in this class. The first one is an acute angle. An acute angle is an angle that is greater than 0 degrees, but less than 90 degrees. Off to the right here, you could see some examples of some acute angles. For example, an 80 degree angle and 45 degree angle. A right angle is an angle that measures exactly 90 degrees. And in this class, what we'll see as time goes on, we could put a little box there that represents a 90 degree angle in the corner. Or sometimes you'll just see a 90 degree angle written in. An obtuse angle is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. Some examples of obtuse angles, they may look something like that. A 110 degree angle is an example of an obtuse angle, as well as a 125 degree angle. And a straight angle is an angle that measures exactly 180 degrees. Here are some examples of straight angles. They almost appear to be straight lines, but they are still named with three points. So those are some examples of straight angles that measure exactly 180 degrees. Let's talk about congruent angles and segments. Congruent angles are angles that have the exact same measure. We use the word measure for angles. And congruent segments are segments that have the same length. We say segments have the same length. So in order to identify congruent angles and segments, we use what we call tick marks. So for example, if we were to look over here at triangle ABC, we can label that as well as triangle DEF off to the right. If we were to add some tick marks on, for example, if we put a tick mark on AB and we put the exact same tick mark on ED, that means that those segments have the same length. Same thing if we put tick marks on BC and EF and AC and DF. It means that those segments that have the same tick marks have the same length. We can also use them for angles. So as you can see here, we're marking angles A and D congruent angle B and angle E congruent, since we have the same tick marks on those, and angles C and F. So off to the side, to name a few of these, we can say that segment DF is congruent to segment AC, since we see the exact same tick mark on those segments. We can also say that angle E is congruent to angle B, since we see the same tick marks on those angles. Let's talk about parts of a degree. Each degree of an angle is divided into 60 minutes. And the symbol for minutes that we use here looks like that. And each minute of an angle is divided into 60 seconds, similarly to a clock. 60 seconds in one minute. And there's a symbol for that. So you know that one degree is 60 minutes, and one minute is 60 seconds. Therefore, if we wanted to convert 90 degrees into degrees in minutes, we could take one degree away and make it 89 degrees, but in each degree we have 60 minutes, so we've gained 60 minutes. Similarly with 180 degrees, we can turn that into 179 degrees in 60 minutes. Now if we wanted to go further and change that into degrees, minutes, and seconds, we can now borrow one minute. So now we have 59 minutes and we've gained 60 seconds. Similarly to the right when we're working with the 180 degrees. 180 degrees is the same as 179 degrees, 59 minutes and 60 seconds. Let's take a look at our first example. So we're told here that angle ABE is a right angle, so I'm putting the box there to represent that. We also know that angle ABE is represented by 
x plus y degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and write that right by that angle. Next, we're told that angle ABC, ooh, ABC right there, is our entire angle at the bottom. It's our straight angle. That's represented by the expression 5x plus 3y degrees. First thing we want to find is the values of x and y. So we should be thinking about what we know here. We know that if we're dealing with a right angle, that that right angle is going to have to measure 90 degrees based off of the definition. And then next we're working with angle ABC. Let's go ahead and trace that in the diagram here. So ABC is that straight angle at the bottom. And based off of definition of a straight angle, like we talked about earlier, we know that a straight angle has a measure of 180 degrees. So we know that that angle has to measure 180 degrees. Setting up some equations then, we know that ABE is a right angle. And we know that ABE is represented by the expression x plus y degrees. That's in the given information. So we can say that x plus y must equal 90 degrees. Similarly, if we take a look at angle ABC, we know that that angle is represented by the expression 5x plus 3y. And since it's a straight angle, it must add up to 180 degrees, or equal 180 degrees. Let's go back to algebra. We're working with a system of equations here since we have both x and y. So I'm going to use what we call elimination method. And so in order to eliminate the x variable, I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 5 since we have a positive 5 in the second equation is the coefficient in front of the x. When you do that, you want to multiply each of your terms by the negative 5, including the 90. And then for our second equation, we can just go ahead and bring that down and rewrite it. And we are going to add elementary style. So now that eliminates the x's, which is what we want. And now we can do negative 5y plus 3y to get negative 2y, and negative 450 plus 180 to get negative 270. Solving for y, we get that y is 135. We want to find the values of both x and y in part a. Well, using one of our initial equations, we know that x plus y must equal 90. And we now know that y is 135. So solving that equation for x, get subtract 135 from both sides of the equation, we get that x is going to be negative 45. So we found part A. We found our value for y. We found our value for x. But part B is asking us for the measure of angle EBD. And that is represented by the expression 2x plus 120. Well, we've already solved for x, and we now know that x is negative 45. So we can substitute negative 45 in for x in that expression. And that helps us find that the measure of angle EBD is 30 degrees. We will go ahead and continue with the second example in just a moment.